of the Malvern Hills sit at the edge of the Canterbury Plains between the Waimakariri and Selwyn Rivers. The pioneering Deans family has farmed this country for 150 years. Looking at the landscape, there's little sign remaining of any native species. The river system draining the valley combines into the Waianiwa Niwa River. And then, when it hits the shingle banks of the Canterbury Plains, for most of the year it disappears underground. In the valley's many folds, some of the streams run through the summer, but for many others, the flow stops, leaving pools of stagnant water. It's an unlikely place to find a rare and endangered native species. Yet this valley's waterways are home to the world's largest known population of Canterbury's most endangered fish, Neochana barosius, or kowaro, the Canterbury mudfish. Absolutely. So there's uh, about four in there at the moment. And this is a G minnow trap, which uh, we use to try and catch the mudfish. It's a system that traps them without doing any damage to them. So we can disturb them and they just swim passively into this little net system and are caught here overnight. So I think we've got about four mudfish here. Here they are. So this is the Canterbury mudfish. And these are probably about medium sized fish. They can get up to about 150 millimetres. And they're in pretty healthy condition, which is one of the really good aspects of this particular population. The fish are quite healthy. They're obviously getting plenty of food and they're not too worried about predators. Canterbury mudfish are so rare most New Zealanders will never see one. They're members of the Galaxiid family, which don't have scales. These fish have a soft layer of skin similar to humans. They also have this aspect of being slightly eel-like because they don't have this top dorsal fin at all. So they look like a fish, but they're almost a cross between a fish and an eel. The overnight catch per trap in this one isolated pool indicates a significant population. Oh yes, yep, they've got some more mud fish in here. Yep, five, is it? Oh yeah, this one's a bit bigger. Yeah. So a more mature one that's possibly two to three years old. In spring, female mudfish lay between 900 and 4,500 eggs, depositing them singly on the stalks of aquatic plants. Any eggs that survive the depredation of damselfly larvae and their ilk hatch into a perilous world. Mudfish fry feed on microscopic plankton, crustaceans and other tiny invertebrates. They must dodge dragon and damselflies and their own adults, known to cannibalise the young. At first, the fry are active in daylight and in more open waters. As they reach about three centimetres, their behaviour begins to change and they too become more nocturnal and more benthic, avoiding predators by staying in the lowest zone of the water. They feed on the wide variety of invertebrates that inhabit these pools and streams, the eggs and young of water snails, insect larvae and worms. That's a midge larvae, so that's one of the things they feed on. Canterbury mudfish are well adapted to the extremes of the local climate. As streams dry up in the long hot summers, pools of standing water soon lose oxygen. Mudfish can thrive in water containing much lower levels of oxygen than their trout or eel predators. They come to the surface, gulp a bubble of air, and hold the bubble in their mouths, pushing the air back over their gills. Like many eel species, mudfish can also inspire some oxygen directly through their skin. But where eels are known to travel overland to escape from drying out waterways, mudfish stay put, burrowing deep into the damp mud. As long as their gills remain moist, they can continue to breathe. Such adaptations have helped, but there's also luck in the survival of this population. They can be quite docile sometimes. So. 
mudfish are easy prey to introduced species like trout and to the native eels. Because the Waianiwa Niwa River disappears underground, the Malvern Valley streams are largely free of these predators. But the drive to produce more and more food on the Canterbury Plains continues to rapidly change the environment the mudfish evolved in. Their survival now depends on human choices, on whether we choose to retain and enhance the few remaining wetlands and stream systems that are still home to the Canterbury mudfish. You know that one jump back in? <laughs>